Would you know, two times in a row, I leave the house, get the GoPro behind me. Dead good. We're on our way down, get loaded, we head back up to Chicago, and we're going to go out to the old uh, Kansas. A load of steel, steel plate coming out of Chicago. Then we'll probably end up getting home late Friday. I guess I'm about due. It's been a couple weeks. But uh, that's just kind of game plan right now, what we're doing. Now we are loaded up, ready to go. That ain't going nowhere. I can tell you one thing. It's warm out there. It's like 70 something degrees out, enough to make you kind of sweat a little bit. Not enough to kill you, but enough to make you sweat. But they were, uh, getting, gotta get out of Dodge here because they're calling for some pretty rough storms tonight down this way. Level 3 on the you know, severe weather chart, however they word it nowadays. So, we're gonna head on north, try to get up close to Chicago. This ain't an area I want to be in when it goes from warm to cold or cold weather comes through anyway. Don't worry, I only spent like 40 bucks. Been looking for that bull snot interior cleaner. Can't find it nowhere. This is the only place I know to come get it, so. We stopped to get it. Now we're getting ready to head back on the road. But here's the kicker. Leaving 70 degree weather down in Tennessee. And by the time we get up into the Chicago area, they're under a winter weather advisory. Crazy. Just flat out crazy. That's all right. Hopefully it don't accumulate to nothing. We got 150 miles to Chicago. We got a full box of snacks. It's getting dark. We're wearing sunglasses. Let's go. Crazy. 432 for fuel. Good place. 478, 483 in gloves. 432 next door to the Loves at the, at the uh, Road Ranger. I'm sure with fuel discount, it might equal out at the Loves to everybody else, but that's if you get a discount there. That's just crazy. 40 cents more expensive than everybody else. Well, that's first for me. At least in a long time. Beat Google Maps by two minutes. But there's one thing I'll say. My, my old truck GPS, it wasn't hard for me to beat it by an hour at times. But Google Maps puts up a good race. And it's not often I beat it. But I beat it by two minutes. For my original start time. So, we'll take it. Well, we survived another night sleeping on the streets up here in Chicago. That's a win in my book. But uh, we're still trying to figure out the fan issue. And about the best that I can come up with on that is that the high pressure 
sensor or switch, however you want to word it, for the AC system can be bad. Everything I researched is pretty much if you don't see any broken wires or anything like that, then that's probably the culprit, which it seems like it, from what I researched, it's a pretty common thing. So hopefully we can get that replaced and hopefully it fixes the issue. But something that doesn't make any sense is even with the fan running, I've always had good heat in the truck up until I blew my hose the other day. Ever since then, I don't know if it's because I changed type of coolant. Well, I can't really say I fully changed it, but put a different type of coolant in and it, it runs, it's runs. it been running cooler since. Or if we got a stuck thermostat. I really don't know the why, but the heat just don't get as cold or warm as it used to. It's running cold now when I'm parked. When I run down the road, it'll burn you out of here. But haven't figured that one out. That That's more important to getting the heat at night. I mean, I slept in my long johns last night. Got up this morning, We got I got a little space heater in here. I turned it on, but it draws the batteries down so bad that it's actually hard on the inverter and the batteries as low as it pulls it down. It pulls it down like almost 12 volts. So We're gonna pull across the street and see if we can not get this junk off this trailer and get over and get our steel plate and head to Kansas. And I might add, this truck doesn't have a high idle on it, meaning I can't idle the truck up without some sort of wizardry, zip ties, and things like that on the, on the throttle pedal. So those are familiar with trucks. Most of them, you can idle them up at night when you're parked or, or sitting still and you leave the truck running. I'm sure that would help with the heat issue. You know, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't, I don't know what's going on. I, 100% honest with you. I really don't know. This is above my knowledge skills. You know, much more changing spark plugs, you know. I don't know. We've gotten loaded. Made a few miles down the road. We're almost to Decatur, Illinois. I'm going to jump out and show you. I was going to show you that over there, but I was trying to hurry to get out of the way. But we're going to stop and show you how I, a little bit how I do steel plate. You can see this is some pretty thick stuff. I like to here cross chain wrap it around the front there helps hold it up and of course I got chains down down through the side and also back here on the back cross chain some of you might understand the theory of cross chain in the front those that don't understand is to keep the load from moving forward the theory what, what most probably don't understand is why I do the back that's real simple. You got the pressure on the front, push it to the back. You get to bounce it down the road, that plate's gonna start doing that little number. It don't matter how tight your chains are. So the theory with the chains on the back is to keep everything going that way against the center. So now you got stuff going, that, you know, pressure going this way, you got pressure going that way. Theory, it shouldn't move forward, it shouldn't move back, Everything should be happy going down the road. So uh, I don't always use chains over the top. Uh, sometimes I'll I'll strap it, but with this stuff being so close to the edge, it's just a lot more, a lot better security of having chains versus straps because straps rub against plate, cuts them. You know how that what happens. So that's the theory on me hauling plate. And I, and sometimes it depends on how, if it's palletized and they got it banded around and all that, but for the most part, that's how I haul play. Well, they got him a waiver on top of there. <laughs> Why we got a radio on? Guess not. You try to get old on a couple times. Try to call the truck name or company name and you know, call them out for the trailer to pull over. No answer. No voicemail box. I guess you'll find out when all this stuff's got snow on it. I don't know. Yeah, the government, you know, has great ideas. 
luckily they kind of improved on them a little bit we stopped here at oak grove we're actually at the ta hard to see but there's ta and petro's over yonder they poured me in here this place currently has a popeyes you grew up on KFC, Popeyes, ain't your thing. I'm not a big spicy chicken person. Either way, I said they're going to be putting an IHOP in over here, which is definitely a step up from Popeyes. I mean, I don't know if they're going to keep the Popeyes or just do an IHOP Express or what. But they're also talking about over at the Petro, where they took the iron stomach out of it. They're talking about putting a Black Bear Diner in. That'd be kind of nice. We had to stop, get some fuel, and finish off our 30 minute break. Uh, you know, thank God that the government realized that the hard 30 minute break was stupid. Now you can incorporate your on duty time and off duty time to get your full break in. So we're gonna finish up real quick and finish our journey. Oh, break time is over. I guess we need to Get on down the road. We got two hours left, and an hour and fifteen minutes worth of uh, hour and fifty minutes to get there, and two hours left on the clock. How about that? I can't escape these things. It seemed like we did like nine hundred miles today. I don't know why. I only did five hundred eighty-four miles. It definitely felt like eight hundred. Good night. You know, yesterday we were running around in t-shirts, and today I was dealing with snowing spots. Not that I ever accumulated anything to freak out over, but everybody else was freaking out, but me, I kept it rolling. I figured out a solution to my, stuff over here, to my, uh, sleeping in the cold. So the old man left a space heater in the truck and I really don't know why because the heaters always worked really good in this truck until recently but uh, either way when I run the space heater it uh, pulls the amperage amps real low, or volts real low on the, on the batteries and it pretty much kills everything uh, shuts the refrigerator off it, it just drains a lot of power from the truck. So, I got to experiment last night. As long as I didn't crank the thing up to full blast where it was running all the time, you know, it, it'd kick on for a little while and then it'd shut off. So I'd pull the amps down and they'd go right back up. So I played with the accelerator. It didn't drop down near as far when I brought the idle, idle up to about a thousand. But this truck don't have a high idle option until now. Reusable zip ties. They worked. Stayed for, wasn't hot in the truck, but it was warmer than, you know, I think it's 25 degrees out or something like that. So it definitely was a lot better. So. Yeah, I hear snapping chains loose. Getting ready to, I guess we're gonna go over there somewhere and unload. But, man, sunrise coming up. Beautiful. Yep, there's a stupid my jack thing. Another one over there. Well, we're hoping for a nice smooth day today. I mean, we kept it pretty decently warm in the truck last night with the little space heater project. I mean, it wasn't burning me out or anything, but you know, I got plenty of heat going down the road. Just a little cool sitting still, for whatever reason. I don't know or understand it myself, but well, uh, we gotta get unloaded here and then we're gonna run down and get another little rock and try to get to the house tonight. That's the game plan, that's why we come here and park. We have plenty of hours. Man, it's been a while since I've been out here to Bryant's. Road definitely ain't no better. Oh man. Get over there in a minute. Get loaded. There's Brian's little shop there. If that's what you want to call it. 
Dad get on cabinet rattling around. Well, we're about a little over halfway home. Stopped to use the bathroom and check straps and get dirt off the trailer. Anything might fall out on the road best we can anyway. What's with people? Speed up, get right at the back of the trailer and just hang out there. I mean, I understand. Sometimes, you know, people try to do it to be nice and possibly let the truck over, but don't just sit there and flash us, make it apparent what you're trying to do versus scooting up and stopping. Either way, what I'm trying to get out of here, don't hang out. Get on down the road. I don't want to get stuck behind that 65 mile an hour truck just as much as you do. Just commit to it. Get on down the road or you know, make it well apparent to what you're trying to do versus wait until we start to slow down and you slow down. Defeating the purpose, I suppose, is what, I, what I'm trying to get out of here. Yep, beautiful St. Louis. Oh man, I'm about glad this day's over with. Good night.